it's your session. Cool. Thanks guys for hanging out until night something. Uh, let's try to make it interactive so nobody falls asleep because almost bedtime for some. Or just waking up time for some. Programmers. <laughs> okay, I come from Accenture. I joined Accenture six months ago. So maybe I don't know as much as you would expect, but uh, what I can tell you guys is that uh, here in Latvia we are a filial from uh, Finland. Uh, we are growing very fast in different industries. I, well, I work for healthcare, uh, social and public services. So I'm not 100% IT guy, I come from the medicine world, but um, I think I always love to be behind the computer, so that's why I end up here again. Uh, no queens. I come from Portugal, I'm not, uh, not from around here. Uh, reason why I got to know Latvia is because my wife is Latvian. So that's the reason very common to many guys, apparently. Uh, so I've heard. So, a bit of introductions. Uh, I didn't have time to make a, a nice uh, Photoshop like Edgar's. <laughs> so this is a picture when I was small and I would start plugging Star Wars. Um, I finished med school in 2004 and I never specialized to be a, a physician facing patients, so I always tried to hide a bit to, into the research world. So I went to biochemistry of nutrition, trying to understand better diseases related to nutrition. And, um, but eventually, okay, I always had contact with patients after all in the research world. Um, 2010 in Portugal, we started having this issue that the government was pushing that we need to use digital tools to document information about patients. They said, okay, they didn't push it as a law, they said we need to follow the guidelines because the European community is pushing, is pushing, there's a lot of talk, but nothing really happens in the law. But okay, we got scared, we need to do it, so I started testing a bunch, talking with uh, vendors, and I saw an opportunity for my work, because I really like to use digital tools to make it easier. Uh, and I decided, since I was testing so many, I could also like consult other physicians and institutions to see what they needed from the digital tools, so EHR and EMR tools, and uh, so I saw also business opportunities, so side job. Um, because maybe of this experience, at some point we got in touch and uh, I decided to take an offer and, and join Accenture. What I do in Accenture, I'm kind of the middleman in impl implementing uh, Epic software solutions. So what we do is we go to a facility, a hospital, usually environment, and we understand each department what they need from the digital tools, and we try to configure in that way. Most of the time we use the, pa the package software as it is, we tweak it, we configure it on the back office, let's say. But at some point, sometimes some integrations are needed, many times, because the, doc, the, the customers don't arrive to us like saying, okay, we're going to dump whatever we have, we're going to start fresh with what you bring, and it's going to be beautiful. No, there's a lot of hard work behind because probably they already invested a lot of money in what they had before, they're changing because it's not good enough, but they still want to use some database or something that they already created and was working, maybe some invoicing, accounting, that is not really our specialty, but we have to integrate. So, uh, our job here in Riga, we are delivery center, so we have the doers. So we don't, we don't like have properly sales teams at all. So we are the guys doing the, the these transitions and these implementations. Okay, moving on. So about our talk today, I would like at least at the end that we have clear what this is, and this I think is really where we're going to. Um, and focus what is happening today, what is available today in the market and where we should be tomorrow. But at that only, this answer, I think, will come from us. I have some ideas that I think it's in that little square there, but maybe you guys can feed and uh, put some light bulbs in my head as well. So, question to you already. Can you give me examples when you go and use some healthcare service where the digital is useful, where the software kicks in, where what kind of examples you guys already felt here in Latvia when you use a healthcare service? Can you guys give me an example? MRT. As patients. Say again? MRT. MRT. MRT? Yes. Okay. Other examples? Prescriptions. Uh, I really don't know. How does the doctor make a prescription here in Latvia? Piece of paper. Piece of paper. Always? Yes. <laughs> okay. Because otherwise, uh, you, 
I was going to ask you what with that. No. <laughs> they just need to collect a checking degree. Do you have rights, for example, for certain drugs? Mm -hmm. So you will, do you have rights for certain compensation? Yes. Okay. And, and everything is on paper. Maybe they have some software which process it later for their accounting or mm -hmm. etc. Basically, you have paper. At best, you take a photo and send for compensation. It's best. Okay. They just check photo, yes, of this paper terms. That, that you say this photo thing, it would be for your insurance company to yes. claim back some money yes. according to whatever percentage they yeah. need to cover. Okay. And at the uh, aptiac, at the pharmacy, they also have some kind of database they consult. You always, no. sure. always, so you always pay full, and then eventually you get some compensation. If you are lucky, they have a health insurance. Very good one that covers that. Okay. Other examples inside the office with the doctor, with another healthcare professional, yeah. some kind of digital tool. What about information? When you go there and you know, get these symptoms, you yeah. complain to him. What is it? It just writes. Right. Yeah? Right only consider uh, if you go visit, you need to uh, inform him because you have to go to the archive and get your case. Okay. Okay. When you get CT, you can get it in uh, CD. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's an actual case. It's very good example. As I said, MRT, you can go with that one. Uh, CDDs can give to a doctor and he can uh, check. Do your diagnosis and make your report. Yeah. Okay, for all digital uh, imaging, so of course they're using. But some clinics have patient records internally. Private label. Yeah. I've yeah. seen mm -hmm. when, when you go there, they, they, they can look up stuff. Mm -hmm. I think you can even book to see a doctor yeah, online. I've heard about that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Depending on the. the that's kind of cool. That's very cool because, come on, we sp we do we book we buy so many things online. Why couldn't we book? That's a very cool tool. But this prescription system is really old-fashioned, really old-fashioned. Because if we have, for example, I've heard that you can go to a dentist clinic. They have agreement with your insurance. They already know how much you should pay from that service, like what percentage. You know, at least this database. It's really old-fashioned. I cannot even imagine the paper trail to control prescriptions should be like. Crazy I think it's a very tricky thing because I ask in my dentist clinic uh, how much I should pay if I pay without insurance and with insurance. Yeah, and they, say, they, they said I should pay a higher cost if you buy but, with insurance. But, but uh, about a few months ago, I went to the same dental clinic and mm -hmm. paid the same money, the same as pay with insurance. Okay. So good advice for me, when I go, I will pay without insurance and I claim back so they don't, they're not, they don't charge me more. Okay, good to know. I'm learning already. <laughs> Thank it you depends guys. on your insurance company. Some yeah. companies have agreements and they just discount. Someone you have to pay full and then you How they can discount if you pay, for example, as I paid two months before 100 person? And after that, I pay. I, visit I, pay, I pay 100 persons the same money, and they said I will get a 50 person discount. I go to one clinic once in one world. We have agreement with the company which uh, they pay you basically half, mm -hmm. they can half discount on the, on the spot. Mm -hmm. And other uh, company, you just collect the full money and then send them, and they have some sort something to get back. So, so big thing in Latvia here right now is the the insurance business. I think it's something that it's seems very, it's the bad because as a private person you can't get full insurance. Mm -hmm. you, your company only can get can because, get. Uh, you need at least I need that person to get insurance. So since you guys focus this so much, it's it's really of course always the money talks a lot in any industry, unfortunately or fortunately. And the truth is that many regulations that the EU is trying to push at the end of the day is also to control the budget. Because, for example, if you're in Latvia, independently of what kind of insurance you are, that is kind of trans-European. When you travel or you relocate in the European community, you guys can ask for that like blue European insurance card. You guys know that. Yeah. And then you go to Portugal, and some time ago, basically you are 100% covered. 
But now Europe is a bit worried, you know, who's going to pay the bill? If you go to Portugal and you have a major situation in health and you need surgery, like an expensive surgery, like 200,000 euros surgery and then you need some kind of treatment until you can come back to Latvia and continue your treatment. So basically the governments agree that everybody, we pay, no problem. But now Europe is worried, you know, who's going to pay the bill really because you are a citizen from Latvia, this is all European community, but this bill should be tracked back, you know. So some countries want that, some countries don't want that, but the European community is also pushing in that direction. Insurance and the money and the cost of treatment is a big push now to make things work on the European level. So let's try to... So the questions we can cover, we can answer today, uh, I think they would, they would really cover a lot. Let's try to make it fast enough and um, interesting for you guys. Why do I care about healthcare? I'm going to tell, well, I was in healthcare until six months ago. So I, did, I really did care a lot. And I'm not like this guy, I was never like this guy. Uh, meaning that he didn't care about this guy because his illness was not big enough and he could not make money because it's something minor. I care about health because even trying not to be the guy that is in front of patients every day, I had to and I saw a lot of pain, a lot of suffer and the only, the, and something that I noticed as well is that many years I didn't have access to tools to document a lot of paper and as a guy that still didn't arrive to 40 years old uh, and technology, knowing where the technology is, felt a bit ridiculous but the truth is that in Portugal the system maybe is not like in Latvia but it's also bad, I would say um, because there's many systems working at the same time and they don't talk to each other all the time, most of the time I can give you an example, very simple, very tangible. One year ago, uh, I had a patient of mine that I was following, following, and he had a minor stroke on the 1st of January after too much or too less party, I don't know. And the guy um, happily recovered well, and I requested to the hospital where he had emergency consultation, all his MRT, all these follow-ups, all the medication he had took, so maybe all this file, imaging and notes. I only got the file three months later, when the guy was already recovering, and we didn't have all the data that we needed. But we assumed some things because we couldn't leave the patient without the treatment. So we just, it's ridiculous that nowadays one have to wait three months for images, and then at the end they couldn't record a DVD for somehow, so they gave me CDs. So I have like a Res uh, magnet resonance, like 10 CDs and some pictures of each and you have to kind of see all those frames, it's, it was crazy. So I found it very ridiculous, it's, a, it's an example of things working in Portugal. So there's a lot of electronic solutions in place, but the problem is each hospital uses whatever they want and we have a lot of uh, private hospitals growing at this time and they just do whatever they want because they're not so well regulated. They are self-regulated and the government is trying to use open source uh, solutions and they thought it would be the cheapest options but they're spending a lot of time in customization and money, of course. Um, so, why do I care is because I really believe that technology could make a difference, make things faster and better quality and it's not available worldwide on the same standard. That's what I understand today. Um, what I believe to be the answer for the future and what will gonna really change and it, this will link to the both presentations we had before today or until today what we have seen is that all the vendors that produce softwares for healthcare so either electronic medical records or electronic health records they have been always focusing on asking their customers meaning they think okay my customer is the hospital or the insurance company or the doctor that buys my software they never thought really that the patient is the one who have to tell what they need because the doctor knows what he needs to document, of course, and the also, also the other professionals around him. But the truth is that patients, us, we are becoming more um, demanding. We want better quality, more service, and we are becoming more knowledgeable. Maybe because of the internet, Wikipedia, whatever, all this doctor Google, and we have a lot of information already in our hands. So, we also want to have it all sometimes. I want to be responsible for my health. I don't want to depend on arts or central vessels for or 
to them to document all my information and then keep it. You know, I want to be the owner. I want to access this information at any time. For example, in Switzerland, it's such a democratic uh, country that every time they do something, they have to ask the population if they agree or not. And it's funny because it's the only European, uh, it's the only country nearby that has this kind of completely freedom access to the information, health records. And if the patient even wants to erase something, it is possible. It can request to be erased something because it, he believes it's uh, not accurate or it needs to justify why and at some point it can get it deleted. So it's a bit crazy because health records should be there forever, but okay, it depends on the concept of the law. So what I say is that if the patient becomes the center of the attention of all the vendors and everybody that produces IT solutions, then it really becomes much more interesting because we can start integrating all this information that we have on a personal level, for example, all these gadgets we've been talking about and the sensors that uh, Emils was presenting today. And if we have a, a way that to show that we want the information in our power, then okay, then the, the integration needs to happen. Because right now what we are allowing to do is like the governments will decide, okay, if hospital A has a software A, and then um, there's a national health record, for example, that controls other kind of information, and they will have to invest or not to integrate the system. But if we want the information, and if we are ready to invest ourselves something, then maybe it will have to be located in some kind of our database or some kind of secure access that we can access through an app or through our personal computers. Like for example, we go and make a blood, uh, blood analyst and Google sends the PDF file or the other file with the results the same day or next day. Okay, we can record a bunch of PDF files in our computer, but it would be better that we have something that kind of gets the, the data per se and for example, at some point shows along five years what happened to our data in our blood because going through those PDF files those pages can be a bit boring and thinking about not falling into big data in a, in a silly way meaning that we produce so much information and then is it really useful is it meaningful meaning that you take five years of analysis to a doctor because you have some kind of metabolic condition that needs to be followed up and then you go with five years of information because you change doctors and the guy has like 55 pages of blood samples analysis to see it's not very tangible so if we have some kind of app algorithms that can already translate this into graphs that could be really realistic and useful because we have to be careful a lot of sensor a lot of uh, gadgeting and then is that information going to be useful for your health or is something just to entertain us so it depends on if we want to go on it but this is the, the, the way it is going. So the definition, this came up in 2008. And a lot of American uh, medical uh, associations decided to start to define this as the focus of their service because the competition in the in US is so big and it's always a private business that sometimes companies or hospitals or companies behind the hospitals, insurance companies, were just trying too hard and to offer too much luxury and quality and blah, blah, blah. But they were already forgetting that the patient is king. He needs to be happy at the end of the day. And it's not only about the facilities. It's that you have actually healthcare professionals that look at you, that talk to you, that you trust. Because we are all humans. And uh, there was this big um, customer satisfaction uh, evaluation in the US. And at the end, what the patient said that they really valued was that the doctor could look at them. And they said, but then they asked the patients where he was looking. He was looking at the computer. Because there they use a lot of EHR and EMR. Of course we need to use, but we need to be smarter. So the software now, they have voice recognition. You can take notes in voice. There's this new ones company. They're very good at it, many languages. So basically instead of, you know, you just talk to the, to the software and you translate, and then at the end you just need to check that it wrote what you meant. So just the tools can be smarter and uh, they are becoming and they're really there to be available. Okay, what is the present offering? So these are some big ones, but there are hundreds more. Most of them American. Um, this is the one that many countries that don't they ran out of European funds or they just don't have the funds. 
are trying to use. It's quite a cool tool. I've been following their work and it's really getting better all the time because people are really contributing and that's all about open source. Uh, this is the one I work with, for example, at the moment. Uh, very complete. It's a system that began in the 70s. Uh, in the Midwest and the, the, these guys were really visionary and they achieved a very complete package and this I'm especially proud about because these guys are from Portugal and I, I just got to know them very recently and I got to know that they are in China in Europe in, in Europe to say France, UK, Portugal and maybe that's it, maybe Denmark as, as well and uh, US and South America so these guys, they were very smart. They tried to know what each region or country or whatever was trying to define as guidelines and standards. So they got their software certified in different standards, or, um, let's say, levels. And that opened the door for them to go in because they really adapted to each region. Because different hospitals, different cultures, different countries need a little, something a little bit different. Because, for example, in Portugal, we have a national health system that's supposed to be 100% free. You just pay a little, let's say, a uh, little tax when you go into hospital just to avoid that thousands of people go to the hospital because of their nails. So if you go there, you pay like three euros just to be sure that you're not going there for spending time because you're lonely or something. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, but apart from that, it should be basically free and that's very cool. But the truth is that the money is running out. I lost a bit my point now. Ah, but meaning that the countries are different. and. Uh, who pays for treatment is one of the big differences. U uh, US is all private, Netherlands is all private, and I, and I have to say it's the best system I saw. And when I arrived to work in the, in the Netherlands, I was a bit like, it's a private system, maybe as bad as the American one, but actually they made it private but very well regulated, so everybody gets really very uh, good care. And they are a good example of about integration. I'll show you a bit more, uh, more details. So. Like I said before, it would be cool that to, when we leave today, we already know what is EMR and what is EHR. Do you guys already know it? Well, it's there, but did you guys already knew it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, this is what came first. So, this was when software uh, programmers made software to replace the paper. Basically it. So, it was like a more sophisticated word, word path in the beginning, just to make notes. You had a file, some personal information of the patient, and there was no integration with anything else. It was just for notes. Then it kind of grew, and there was an evolution, and now it's really like you can, hospital comes in, for example, in an emergency, room is evaluated by one crew of healthcare professionals, they start documenting. So the same patients, for example, it will be some information, the vitals will be taken by a nurse, Diagnosis will be made by a doctor there. Maybe it's because it was a respiratory problem. The respiratory therapist will do some treatment two hours later. It will document, and documentation can be made live, meaning that the doctor may be writing something on this file. This moment, the nurse is documenting something else, and the respiratory uh, therapist is saying that, okay, we're going to make three sessions today oxygen, mask, blah, blah, blah. And it, this information falls in one bucket. And then when each one of them opens the file, you can see like in different levels. Um, jumping from EMR, we jump to EHR. EHR is something bigger. It's not focused on the treatment itself, but it's all the information that concerns health of one person. So usually it's, this concept applies to national or regional levels. So it's all the information that concerns your health, and I'll give you an example. Um, it's not only what happened when I got, went to the doctor or the hospital with some problem, it's also how many times you gave blood if you are a blood, a blood donor. Um, if you want to start inputting some data about your tracking gadgets, in the future should fall into this. So EHR is something more global and this is crazy amount of information because when you start saying, okay, I'm going to keep, imagine we are young, here, we don't have much data about our health because we are mostly healthy. Uh, healthy. But when we are 80, we're going to have much more information than the people who are 80 now. Recorded, I would suppose. Even if we are not with disease, we have some checkups and all this stuff. 
it should be recorded somewhere. Oh, this is a good one. So, jumping from this to HR, it's something bigger. And then we go back to the idea that I really believe is <coughs> what's going to really pump the creation of new stuff in IT. So, this is the patient-centered medical home or patient-centered care. This is something new um, that came in the 2009, around that. And the idea is like, okay, the patient, for example, chronic patients, diabetic, like we talked today, uh, at some point of his disease, he already knows how to manage it. If he's a healthy, kind of controlled diabetic person, he already knows how to, when he eats that, it's going to affect his sugar in some way, and he has already the gadgets to measure the sugar at home. So, why not create more facilities, more technology that can allow the patient to be controlled from home? Let me try to put this bigger because this is no good here. And this is a way to, don't forget, uh, when we use US data, we always fall back into the idea that it's a private system, so everything is about the money, and with this, people, health systems spend less money with their patients, so that's why they're also pushing it. So you see, when this started, at the end of 2009, there was like 1% of family clinics <coughs> in the US that were using some kind of interaction with the patients at home. Of course, when there's an emergency, the Atropoly Zero goes home, that doesn't, doesn't fall into this. Uh, it. It was about really either consulting the patient at home or some data, some treatment information was collected at home and then falls into the EHR information. So they, they did a huge lab. In, two, in, uh, in kind of six years, they did a huge work because the, this at the end of the day saves money because they don't want to see the patient at the hospital. It's very expensive. So they're pushing it. And there it goes. Well, they don't give us the number, but we can see that the money they spent less. And that's what they want, insurance companies, don't they? Okay. So this patient-centered care, or medical home, uh, applies to anybody. Children, youth, or adults. Usually, it, it, it applies more to patients who are kind of full-time patients, they have some kind of condition that makes them in need of some kind of control. Uh, but then again, imagine the situation. Um, you have a baby, you will have, the baby will have some kind of infections along the way because his immune system is growing, so he's going to have temperature many times in his childhood. Most of those times, it's not a medical condition, it doesn't need treatment at all, but you can have some kind of professional supervision. So imagine those gadgets that we have, infrared thermometers, that you can measure the kid's temperature or yourself. If this information could be stored in his file, when he goes to the doctor next time when he has a serious situation, or even the, the doctor from afar, he can say, okay, this time there's one point more in his temperature, it seems different what he usually has, so now come to the hospital. So all this information, it might seem a little bit small, but if it becomes integrated, with your file, it can be really meaningful. And that's what I'm talking about. But for this to happen in a serious manner, we have to want it. Because this happened in the US just because the patients became so obsessed with their information that they wanted to own it. So they pushed the software to them. They pushed, they pulled, they pulled. So, classically, what happens today is like, okay, you've got professional doc uh, private doctors, office, You've got the community pharmacies, by community in the US that means the one that dispenses some kind of uh, medicine with some kind of uh, insurance coverage. So they have to be linked to some kind of database. Then you have like, like traumatology, like a place where they do physiotherapy and all. Uh, so it's a kind of long-term care. Home care, that falls in that PCMH. Uh, regular hospitals, cancer, that always lasts some time, treatments. And then telemedicine, telehealth. So this is that that would be for example, and this is very cool. The system of EHR in Latvia is not good, 
But for example, there are international interventions where doctors otherwise in other places do some kind of treatment like robotics with telehealth. So what I mean is like it doesn't it doesn't fit, you know? At some point you can use high technology like a robot that's gonna make a little surgery instead of a doctor in place, and you can have that in Latvia, but then you don't have a nationwide EHR system. It's very surprising because we are a small country, we could have it. And I'm going to show you an example nearby that has it and use the money that came from Europe in a good way. Uh, oh, those guys. You know those guys? They're not Latvians. Uh, but this is a good example. I don't know any other country in the world that has this. These guys, they already had something before 2008, but they just decided we got to get up the uh, European money and we're going to make it from, from scratch, from zero. So they gather the information that they could get internationally, they gather the information with the doctors, with the patients, and they made something that is nationwide. It's really impressive. But okay, it's not a big country, not such a big challenge, but they decide to do it. And if you put your mind to it, you can. So they are. Actually, the best example I know about having a digital file really following you 100%. Whatever you go, any doctor, any nurse, anybody can access it and it will be updated real time. And of course, maybe because they are so healthy, they do a lot of stuff, I don't know, or vice versa. Now, other examples, not perfect, like Estonia, but very good still. These guys, uh, they had a lot going on in electronic records but at some point they needed to integrate it so they create like a common database, the MedCom and what happens is that you go in different places and they access these different places will access MedCom to try to feed from information and then register something new so at the end of the day the problem is sometimes integration is not great and <coughs> what they try to do is okay you have central database and everybody tries to go there and update but then there are security levels, all this control and at the end of the day it's not a very, very effective system but not the worst in Europe for sure uh, and then you have these guys, I'm a big fan of these guys I worked there for two years and I was very suspicious in the beginning because I thought it was like America and, but the thing is that the law regulates it very well so there's no mishaps there and what they have there is completely different. I thought this was not a very good system, and then when I tested it myself, I was surprised. It's more like peer-to-peer -peer here. It's like it's not like a centralized system, but it's like I go to my physician, I need a prescription according to an private insurance because there's no other there. Uh, my consultation will be paid fully or a percentage. That's for starters, and then I get a prescription. When I get to the apteca, they already know what I'm going to get, and they would only ask the money uh, that corresponds to the percentage I'm supposed to pay. So, it's more about, you go to one place, this place will request information from another, and then you have to go to another healthcare service, like the pharmacy, and this information already arrives there, and it works. But it's more like, upon request, it follows you according to what you use. If you go to physiotherapist, again, there will be a prescription of the exercise of the recovery you need to do. It came from your doctor, from the traumatology center or whatever. And it always like this, it follows you. I think the future is not, it follows you. you. You get it yourself, you have it. It can be in some kind of server somewhere, but you have access to it and then you kind of share. Um, ah, going back to this example about when you see that blue card from European insurance, it has a little chip. One would believe that chip contains some kind of health information. You guys know what is there? It's like your date of birth, I think your blood type is there, and then what kind of coverage you have these days. <laughs> then again, Europe now is completely, this is kind of behind the scenes, they're completely focused about how much it costs to treat and how much it costs all these people going around and using services because people are getting to know that in Portugal it's one way, in England it's another. I'll give you another example. I had this patient, unfortunately, uh, a serious disease, and she was from the UK. Every time she, she was in a cancer situation, every time she would come to hospital, she would ask, how much money 
is this costing me? And in reality, nothing. But she would ask how much money it, I would have spent to the Portuguese government. Before she died, I remember her bill was reaching 200,000 euros. So all chemotherapy, surgeries, all things she had to do. She mentioned at some point, she said, if I would be in the UK, the NHS wouldn't cover all this. So at some point in her disease, her family was saying, come back to the UK, because death was in her way. And she says, come here. She says, no, here I get the best care, and it's for free. You see, so, so you have, and it's not a rich country. So uh, European citizens can actually move around, and if they have their papers in order, they can use systems from different uh, countries. Uh, but then again, that ridiculous card that we have only tells our date of birth, basically. Okay, so Europe, let's finish up. What is out there in other countries? This is a bit like Estonia. They didn't need European funds. I don't know why. And this is the kind so of they are hospital. far away from Estonia. Say again? They are far away from Estonia. Yeah, they don't. Have, they have sauna in the streets. Uh, <laughs> this guy. This is. Um, we have customers here. And these guys are just, you know, when they do something is from scratch, new, top. That's what they want. Because they want to tell Americans that they do better than Americans. And actually they do. Um, it's impressive because when you go to hospital there, we don't see almost, well, we don't see many local trained healthcare professionals. We see from UK, US, France, Portugal, India, everywhere, Japan. And they don't have many local resources, so everything is coming from uh, afar. And they use, at the end of the day, American software. And when they do it, they usually do it good. Um, and then the Americans. Our fellow Americans, they are interesting because they have the most vendors, they have the most IT solutions, they have the most modern IT solutions, with the most integration possible, and yet, they are so inconsistent. There's, okay, Obamacare tried to do something nationwide, but that was more to, to give coverage to the people who couldn't have insurance. So this Obamacare is more like health services to a lower <coughs> part of the, of the citizens. And the truth is that you still have a lot of competition in between insurance companies, and then they have their own hospital um, kind of groups, and they work a bit closed. What's happening in the US, because people are wanting, they want to own the information, what these vendors are trying to do now is say, okay, you want the information to follow you, so pay us, I don't know, 10 bucks a month, you're going to have access to your own portal, you can, and then you can just download whatever you want from your file. But then again, your file will be related to one software, to one hospital, or one group of hospitals. Then if you move to another state, and there's no same company there, the same group of hospitals, what you have is to re request manually and then it will send the file to the new facility. So at the end it works, but it's still, it's not automatic and it's not national, not even state. The states, in each state it changes a lot according to what kind of hospital. Any comments, any doubts? Democracy. Yeah, it's very democratic. So, I already kind of said what I believe the patients need and should want, but that's what I really want. What do you guys, for example, for the situation, let's talk about our reality now. What do you guys would like to be different 2016 already in Latvia about technology in healthcare? For example. Basically, everything I have. Anything creative? Because we have no e-signature. It doesn't work. Even in Estonia, they have less e signature than we have. And we have miserable numbers. Because they have different government than we have. Uh, yes, different, but nevertheless, but, they, but have that, that is the that is the they have less e signature than we have. Mm -hmm. And we didn't have much of that. Most people who use e signatures are finance, uh, law enforcement, and something like that. Most in numbers. Mm -hmm. Private users, yes, they take some, but basically they didn't use. Mm -hmm. I doubted that, say, last day, said that uh, 
60,000 uh, signatures is, is issued a year. It's not much. It's basically it's much less than any. That's the number here. Yeah. yeah. Official number, official government. Mm -hmm. It's less than, for example, your any bank which has internet bank has issued this. Yeah, yeah. This they kind of the, logins and all. Yeah. Because that's that's funny because I have a signature here with my card, but the only time that I could use it was with the bank. To to do a contract that they said, okay, we can do it online, we can, we can do it virtually, you don't yeah. need to come here, but you need to use your signature and say, wow, I can use it, first time. That's the only time, it. for example, I don't have it, I don't need it. For, for example, for internet bank... I thought it was cool, I thought I would go into it, I, but I still... Uh, you don't need, time. you just go to the bank, once they check that you are a real person, you're not from some, and you get your... Internet no, yeah, yeah, but I have the internet access, but to do this contract, which was uh, this kind of investment thing, uh, I need to go and sign a contract at the bank, yeah. yeah, like you would do a loan for your house or something, and then I would avoid to go to the bank if I would use a signature. Yes. So what I've noticed is not really requested uh, in many places. And funny part, that for example, if you want government services, you can use your identification from your bank. Mm -hmm. It's basically mean that a signature is ah. not... Gotcha. For example, we have Portal Latvia where yeah. you can uh, log in using your the bank. bank uh, so that's a good, that's kind of a, we can see that's a symptom. You would say that the government trusts uh, no, the logging system. No, government trusts because government was too lazy to do a job and banks done it already. And okay. at the end of the day... I was trying to put it on a more positive note. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. can, can you please repeat the question? That just so my question is like, what really can be very small things what do we really would like that next time we go to a health service we would find there from the things we know exists and could be there because so i understand if i go to doctor tomorrow it, my diagnosis will be written do you think that is kind of i would say effective efficient well, i think it's very young uh, science uh, to find out what uh, a great person wants have uh, because for example if I have that some uh, data devices on my body and I have sex or some other activities how doctor can conclude uh, what I need to take okay then the thing gonna give you a real example uh, asthma patient 83 years old asthmatic for 40 years and she uses a lot of Atrapalitziba service, which is kind of costly for, because there's a lot of people working in this organization. And if, she, and if the ambulance is at the old lady's house because she thought something is wrong with her lungs or heart, uh, they could be saving somebody in a real need with a cardiac attack, for example. Okay, what I'm saying is that if this lady could have access to some kind of gadget that she can actually wear, because the one we saw today, it's more for people who are kind of knowledgeable, computer savvy, and they can use it. So I'm talking about sensors that we could apply to somebody who doesn't know shit. Computers. Uh, and these people, this, for example, I'll give you a very realistic... Um, there's a sensor that we put on the finger in the hospitals. It costs like four euros in China to make. That gives you the saturation of oxygen in your blood according to the color. So it goes a light through your skin and it tells you how much supposedly is oxygen in your blood. If that device would be connected to that old lady, the doctor who is getting the call says, okay, I know that you're asthmatic, I know that probably you're a bit stressed right now, but your pulses are fine and your blood pressure was fine along the day because I've got this information in front of me and I know that your oxygen is also fine. So we're going to delay we are going to be on call, and if something, you push this button. Or we call, or there's an SMS that goes to your, to your son or to the person who cares for you. You see? But and you know a story about an old lady. Okay. I thought about a normal, healthy person. Okay. Okay, let me, let me go. So, yeah. can I dwell a bit on, since you shared, can I talk about, about your example a bit? Yeah. From imaginary point of view now? Yeah, sure. So, people with, uh, that go into some kind of uh, burnout, sometimes they have very, a lot of symptoms related to anxiety, sometimes. 
and can be high pulse, can be high blood pressure, one of them goes up just crazy. Because there's a nervous stimulation, it's not like you have a disease that makes you have blood pressure, but it's your nervous system that is stimulating the wrong buttons and your blood, is, your blood pressure is going up because something is malfunctioning right now. Uh, if before you got a symptom of a problem, it was healthy, you believed you were healthy, correct? Of kind of. Honestly, I assume that it's coming for, for one year. Okay, but before no, that year, you assume... We are old, he is not a pill. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm old, I'm old now. I'm... You're old? I'm like old lady. <laughs> <laughs> he is an okay. old lady. If you would be wearing some gadgets that recorded some information beforehand, the situation he came upon could have been predicted. How? Because we could see that at some point his blood pressure or some, si some signals could have tell you that something is not normal, it's not physiological for his age, for his weight, for the person who never showed up at the hospital. There's a lot of information you can measure. But for each person you need a uh, separate population about his health. Of course, but you can also only start this file okay, okay. when the person you goes to the hospital the first time. could be an average, but if we take a person who is low and high, this information, basically, this information is much more available than we would think. Basically, of course, that there will be no longer doctors because doctors basically will be replaced by something like IBM. doctors will be dead by something ammo because none of the doctors can trace, for example, ten thousand patients. Indeed, basically, indeed. that's what the point. I'm asking what's the conclusion of that, uh, the of that uh, big information. Uh, that's, that, that's the point. You just connect this data to this big computer and uh, basically... He but he has a very good point. Because we will be creating too much information. I really Let's believe see. that. Yeah. See. And the problem is we will need to filter. But again, we only start doing this process from an IT point of view when we think from the side of the patient, not saying, what is the doctor wanting? I think the doctor had already 30 years of EHR going, evoluting in his point of view, you know? So many the vendors, the IT vendors were like making what the hospital and the doctors want. Now we need to think, okay, what the patient needs? And the patient is already getting something. I saw in the LMT advertisement on TV, there's those ladies running and they're competing and they're measuring all the stuff, there's the guy with his iPhone or iPad, checking his weight, going down. You guys seen that? Yes. Yeah. And everything is Bluetooth connected and all that. Okay, that is a, <coughs> a bit too little, but I, the technology is there when we can gather really meaningful information. When it's too much and not useful. For example, that guy. That guy is overweight in the, in the advertisement, in the nightclubs. But the guy is overweight. Maybe he doesn't have a disease. Just a bit weight of too much. But that Did information... Did so you weight or not? Say again? Did you so call weight which one was spurious, this one uh, training staff or not? Sorry man, I didn't understand. <laughs> okay, in the, in the advertisement yeah. you saw the scales, his weight. Yeah. Did you saw this weight before? No, but I saw the graph going down. I saw this, the guy was chubby, and I saw the graph going down. So if today his value is here, it means that it was more chubby the beginning. What I mean is that if tomorrow this guy falls into the Stradinia with a heart attack, if actually that information would be recorded, Does we would have count? seen we would have seen what's going on with this guy. Maybe this guy start training like crazy. He was completely not on the physiological uh, aerobic and he, he fucked up his heart. Okay, next question. Does it help this information which one was recorded from that device? Of course because you understand what what made this happen. And heart attacks can happen for different situations. You will not say, okay, maybe the heart attack uh, happened because he has some clove arteria. We know that this guy, for example, when you, you are fat, too fat, you accumulate a lot of fat around the heart, mainly on the down part. And if you are burning it, you are, you are pushing your heart too much, it's covered. And that will stress the muscle. So you will know that the problem is in the muscle and not in the artery. So, okay, it, might, it sounds like very little. 
but for the treatment option of the patient in an acute moment can be very interesting. But he is dead. No, this guy can be saved because he got to the hospital. <laughs> That's the thing. But the, the percentage is not in his favor. And probably will die. Be. <laughs> okay, man. So, since you guys stayed here so long, that gentleman in the back was saying that in the future we're going to replace the, the doctors by Basically, computers. For example, my so called family doctor has saved 25,000 people. Mm -hmm. If you have to monitor 25,000 records, I think he <laughs> basically will be no longer doctor. Uh, he will die faster um, than that. people. <laughs> so, that's a very interesting topic. It comes from this next slide, and now it's the fun part. How many doctors per 100 citizens are in Latvia? And I tell you, Latvia is in a very good position considering the worldwide situation, I tell you. And I already give you a very good help. So give me a number. 3.76. Wait, 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 wait. I need to write. It's not digital. Wait. So it is. 3.76. Name? John. John? Yeah. 3.5. Come on, I'm going to help you out. You have to be more specific. 3 plus X. Name? Without. 3. Point. Plus X. So, Regex. Regex. It's programmer. Okay. 3, comma. 5, 6. You said? That's me. Come on. 3, 3, 3, 3, 3. Aha. I would give 3.9. There is this number. 3.9. 3.9. It's not here. Your name? Edward. Anybody wants to? 50 person. <laughs> okay, it's in between 3 and 4. <laughs> Just to help you. Um, there's going to be something good at the end of this game. Come on, guys. Just four people? Okay. Yeah, that's 3 point, uh, 25. 3.25. There will be price. 3.48, John. Again. Closest John the second. Where is the slice? 3.48. <laughs> also an online. Okay. Anybody wants to kick one more number? 3.1. 3.01. and 3.01. What's the owner of 3.1? Artis. Artis? Yeah. Okay. Andres. Okay. Can you see screen again? How long you are Six months, but six I'm, months? I'm married to a Latin for five years, and I've got a five-year-old. So good, it's mm -hmm. like incredible. So good, that's why I write only three letters. <laughs> <laughs> I don't show my. my like... No, because I know an artist, and I was just check, checking if it's not artist as well. <laughs> you don't learn Latin, you learn names only. Yeah? No, no, no. I'm always like, a... come on! I was here for a couple, a bunch of hours. And I was having a kick because I, I think I just do a lot of the presentations, I think. <laughs> okay, so you guys are ready for the number? It's scary. Uh, bring it out. Come on. Oh. Do I have internet? <laughs> World Health Organization. Is it online? Updated. It's online, it's like oh, live. It's nation, blah, blah, if a doctor dies, it's while we were talking, <laughs> the statistics <system laughs> change. It's changed. They died so eventually. So, check out, check this out. Cuba, money, it's minus 10, it's not zero. These guys are really struggling, they don't have any. And look, they make a bunch of doctors coming out of universities. It's very, really surprising, that's why and the, I've been there, these guys have very small resources. One time I, there was this uh, um, friends kind of group, they offered a machine to a hospital in Cuba where we were getting some training. Then the next time a friend of mine went there to get training and they didn't use the machine and the guy was like, why you get an expensive machine was given to you, why don't you use it? Because we don't have the money for a cord. Okay. <laughs> because there was no electricity in the room where they put the machine. So this is how ridiculous these guys, but that's the other point of it, is that the doctors have to use their heads a lot. It's like Dr. House in Cuba, 
and they, they are very smart, and they, they do very good diagnosis, and there's a lot of them. That's why they can export them as well. Um, okay, so Latvia is on the 25th place, which is still very good. Portugal is a bit... Well, there it is. Three, five, seven, nine. So, who is, who is the winner? Which John? This, this. I asked you to be more specific, but you didn't need to be specific. <laughs> so, you get something that I wanted, but they said it was for you. You get the power bank. Okay. You have, okay. Do you have an iPhone? <laughs> yeah, here I have one. Yeah, you really need it. You will need it. Uh, and that's it, man. Questions? Can we go home? Alrighty. <laughs> Too early? Let's let's just jump to Friday evening and let's go to the bar. Oh, yeah. Don't forget <laughs> to put, <laughs> to put the, the green, green card in the right place. <laughs> what happened with the red cars? Okay, thank you, Federico. If you have more questions, please come to <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, there is also great healthy stuff for you. I'm lucky.